Hey honeys, what's pop lock and dropping? It's your girl Milana Tore. Welcome back to my channel. In this little segment, I'm going to be doing a uncensored BBL slash 360 lipo QA. And I'm also going to be telling you a few things that you should know when you are going to get your new body, honey. So if you wanna know what girls have asked me and what I have to say about my whole surgery, stay tuned. So honey, let's get into it. Okay, let me see what y'all had to ask me. So I did a questionnaire on my Instagram and I let y'all ask me some questions. So I'm just gonna go through these real quick so that way we're not dancing in circles. Of course, some of y'all may or may not know I had a BBL. I am now 16, 17 days post-op. I absolutely love my results. I haven't had any complications. I haven't had any problems. My health is great. If I ever wanted to go get a surgery again, I would definitely go back to the same doctor that did my surgery. But I would just go about going to Dominican Republic in a different way, of course. I would go get me a Airbnb, already have my own nurse hired and my own massage therapist and things like that. But I would definitely go back to my doctor because he did an amazing job. He definitely understood the assignment and I'm definitely pro-surgery. So if you don't like something about yourself, honey, go get it fixed. Whether it's working out or having to go under the knife, whatever it is that you want to do with your body, go do it, honey. Because as you can see, hmm. <laughs> it definitely benefited me lots like I was already bad but now I'm just like honey I'm on a different level now and I'll show y'all what, what I look like underneath my this isn't a dashiki but my dress I love this dress I know I love these African type flavored fits they're just really cute to me and they cover your whole body it's very modest sophisticated and it just looks like you're a well endowed woman so I definitely love wearing these but any i'll show y'all what i look like underneath here in a little bit okay so now oh and i see somebody say in the comments that my doctor was rafael bays i want to uh, slam that now if it does not come out of my mouth do not believe it i deleted the comment only because there are some stupid ass girls who will actually believe a complete stranger who knows nothing about me well, who doesn't know me isn't close to me. How would you even know where I wouldn't got surgery if I didn't tell anybody? So I just wanted to go in and slam that now. That is not my doctor. I went and checked him out. He only has 24,000 followers. He doesn't even like, he doesn't even have enough followers for me to consider him. I don't care how rude that is. I'm just saying he didn't even make it to my top five of the people that I was looking at to get my body done by. So again, I'm not gonna be telling anybody who my doctor is because I'm sure in these questions, it's in there, but I'm gonna just go ahead and get that over with now and let y'all know that I will not be announcing who my doctor is. I had to do my own research. I found an off the wall doctor that nobody recommended me to him. I literally just found him in the area that I wanted to go get surgery and I chose him and he was available for my birthday and I went and I did it and honey, he did an amazing job. So I feel like if you want to go get surgery, you need to do your own research, find your own doctor, and not just go and do something because I did it. And then also, you know, I know there's some girls that are mad because I won't tell them who my doctor was. And guess what, honey? I really don't give a fuck. Like, I really don't care. You can be mad all you want to, say all the stupid shit you want to. Somebody was said, you are you just don't want people to look better than you. That doesn't even make sense. How the fuck could you look better than me? And then somebody else said something about, it's not even about telling who your doctor is. It's about putting girls on game and et cetera. And I don't have to do that. I don't have to do any of that. I can do whatever the fuck I want to. I'm not telling you who my doctor was. So just move on with it. Now, let's get into the rest of these questions. The first question was, are you happy with your results? Absolutely, yes. Are you still in pain? No, I'm not in pain. I'm just sore. Of course, I can't completely bend down or bend over. And my stomach area is still very stiff. But I'm not in any pain whatsoever. Next question is, how long after having your surgery could you sit down? Now, I'm not even sitting down right now. I am using my BBL pillow here that's in this. And I'm sitting on my thighs. So I push it to my thighs and sit on that. And to answer your question, 
For the first month, you should never directly sit on your butt because within the first month is very crucial. You shouldn't exert yourself. Your body is still getting used to the extra fat cells. A lot now, of course, from the first day that I had surgery to now, my butt is a lot smaller. My butt was humongous my day of surgery, but a lot of fat cells, they die. So for the first month, it's very important to not diet, to eat as much as you can, to feed the fat. I can't sit on my butt for, of course, the first month, but you're supposed to stay in your faha for three months. And of course, for the I'm going to take it easy as well within my second month, just because I don't want to mess anything up or, you know, honey, we're trying to, we're trying to stay snatched and keep this booty fat. So of course for the first month, don't. And then after that, you're okay to start sitting on it lightly. And then of course after three months, you're good. You just want to make sure as many fat cells survive as they can. The next question is, are you excited or nervous to use your new body? I'm excited, I'm not at all nervous. I'm actually really excited to have sex. Oh my gosh, girl. But I'm definitely excited. I cannot wait to get some dick. I can't wait to twerk this ass. My butt is very jiggly. My butt is not hard at all. My butt is very squishy. It's not firm. My doctor did an amazing job. And then, honey, like, I just can't wait to, you know, wear all these new clothes, get out this faja. I'm really excited to start working out. If you don't know, my body is really amazing when I work out. I have abs, biceps, cuts, just all that. So I'm definitely excited to get my body back on track. Of course, some girls, they'd be like, you just had all that surgery and now you have to keep up with it. What's the sense in that? I'm just gonna work out. The whole point of it is I can't grow hips. I can't, and I'm not gonna sit here and work out every single fucking day super hard, drinking hella protein shakes to build my ass. Or, you know, and, and I can't get my stomach, you know, I just, it's just all type of stuff as to why you get a BBL. It's basically like a restart. You know, getting all the fat sucked out, moving it to your hips, moving it to your ass. Now you restart. And now once you start working out, the results are just so different. So I'm excited to start using my body actively, working out, getting my abs back and shaking my butt more. You know, my butt's gonna sit up even higher, my hips. Now I can build my hips because I have now have fat there to build. And it's just, I'm definitely super excited to heal up. I've been already being active, so it's just my midsection that's stiff and that I need to let soften up. But I'm definitely super excited to put this pussy in this ass and smiley face. Well, my baby face. <laughs> Next question is, um, that's not a question, that's not a question, that's not a question. I hate it when I say ask me questions and then bitches be like, shopping spree haul coming soon, I hope. Or just like, bitch, you are looking for too much attention. Just go sit down in the corner and wait your turn. Okay. Next question was, now that you have your BBL done, do you think you're going to go under the knife? Honestly, this year was the year of me getting everything about myself fixed that I wanted to get fixed. I got my teeth fixed. I got my body done. I've been had my boobs done. I got some scars that I didn't like. I got my scars covered up. I, my feet are pretty. I got my punani area together with my punani, with my skincare line. So honestly, I feel like I'm perfect. Like my hair is good. I got good hair. I got amazing skin. I have beautiful features, nice hands. You know, of course I messed up my finger, but you know, it is what it is. I have so many different other great qualities that men don't even care about my finger being messed up. Got smashed it in the door a long time ago. Honestly, I feel like I'm perfect. I feel like I'm that bitch, I'm the shit, I'm a queen, I'm gorgeous. Like there's nothing else right now that I wanna get done. Of course, after I have kids, that's going to all change. But as far as going for a round two BBO, I'm going to let my butt settle, my hips settle. And if I want to in the future, I will, but right now I'm cool. Um, the next question was, are you seeing a nurse in home or do you have to travel to the doctor? Now, pertaining to in Dominican Republic, I had a private nurse that would come to me when I was in the recovery house. They had nurses, nurses that were there. And I was seeing comments about, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're going through this alone and et cetera. And I don't know what people, I guess people think that I just, you just go through surgery, no one's there to care for you, you're just doing everything by yourself. But it's not like that. You know, they have a nurse. You have people around you helping you. You know, I'm a beautiful girl. There's guys 
helping me, women helping me, you know, nurses helping me. It's not like I just went through this whole process by myself. I don't even know why people would think that. And um, of course, when I was home, I didn't necessarily need a nurse. I was already, my body was already doing good, my vitamin, I was taking my vitamins, my antibiotics, and I'm just naturally a healthy woman. So I didn't have to go to the doctor when I got back to Dallas, Texas, but um, I did have to get my drain out. And of course, my friends took that out. But other than that, the nurses and everything was fine. The only issue I had was with the recovery house. Everything else was absolutely perfect and I would, you know, I would do it again. The hardest part of your BBL journey was the recovery house. That was it. Do you like your doctor? I love my doctor. My doctor is handsome. He smells good. He looks rich. He looks like he knows what the fuck he's doing. He just looks like a doctor. Like he was, I would have interviewed him and all that other stuff, but I was like, I'm not gonna just put everybody onto my doctor. Bitches need to do their own research. You know what I mean? Like figure it out yourself, just like I figured it out myself. And I don't care if that's rude. I really don't care. Next question. Um, other than bringing cash to the DR, what else do you think you should that? Eh. Okay, so other than bringing cash to DR, what else do you think should be brought? A speaker is one thing that I didn't bring for my music. Um, a backrest, because I already had my BBL pillow. So you should bring a backrest also. I wish I would have had that when I was on the plane. I mean, it was real comfortable, but I still should have bought a backrest. You don't need diapers. Well, I she said what should have been brought. But a lot of things that I brought that I didn't need, like I didn't need to bring any diapers because I was having to pee a lot. So there was no point in having them. And then when I got out of surgery, they had a catheter or whatever inside of me that collected my pee. So it's like, I brought too much stuff, like my puppy pads, I only needed half of the ones that I brought because I had a drain inside of me and I'm so thankful I had a drain, I'm so thankful I had a drain because I don't want to be bleeding all over the place. I don't even know why doctors let people just sit there and drain out like that, like thankfully I had that so I didn't need my puppy pads, um, I only needed a couple. When I'm, I would like go to the restroom or sometimes, you know, pee would be on the floor or when I would get massages and, you know, liquids would come out, she would use them. But other than that, I was really prepared. Nothing else that I should have brought other than a few things. And then of course I just packed a little bit oh, too much. What was the pain level right after surgery, a couple of days after and now? So the pain level right after surgery, it wasn't pain. For me i was just really like sore and and uncomfortable because you have to stay in the hospital bed for 24 hours laying flat on your back to make sure you don't get any blood clots and that can be super uncomfortable after a while and um a couple days after I was still just sore, you know, I had my trauma doll, so I wasn't really in too much pain. And then now, of course, my pain isn't bad at all. So if you have never been through anything, you never since like had any type of pain, it's gonna be really bad for you. But if you've been through shit, your pain tolerance is high, then you'll be good. I mean, I got my neck pierced right here. So it's like, pain for me just isn't that bad. And I mean, you see, I got this tattoo. Ooh. I got this tattoo here. So like pain for me is just like, it's more of an experience instead of a feeling. You know, I don't really feel pain. I kind of just like, um, it's an experience of like adrenaline rushing and stuff like that. So everybody handles it differently. Is how often do you smoke since you got your BBL? I smoked all the way up until the day that I left for Dominican Republic. And then right when I got home, I was smoking weed. Me personally, I don't feel like smoking weed affects anything. I feel like more so they are worried about cigarette smokers and vapors and then whether or not you're smoking cigars because that can as well damage your lungs because you do have to go under anesthesia and they want to make sure that you're able to breathe by yourself. Now I smoke joints and weeds. You have to do a lung test before you go under and of course I pass the lung test. So honey, smoke weed whenever you want to and if papers is too much, smoke it out of a bowl. Next question is, how did you deal with pre-surgery jitters? You already looking bomb, sis. Thank you. And honestly, you just deal with it. 
I mean, you're finna do it, so do it. Looking back, how do you feel about everything that happened in Dominican Republic? I don't feel anything about it. Like, it happened, it is what it is. I've been through tougher shit in my life, like way worse than that. So it's like, it's just something that happened. Like, next, you know what I mean? Like, shit, at the end of the day, I look amazing and I'm in great health. Shit happens and you have to know how to deal with it when shit does hit the fan. Is Do you have to follow a specific diet? No. Now, of course, right after you have surgery, some people think you're supposed to diet, but you're not. You don't want to immediately have had all the fat sucked out your stomach and then start dieting and lose all the fat in your ass as well. You want to eat. You know, of course, don't eat too much processed foods and, you know, of course, not too many fried foods and stuff like that, but you still want to feed yourself. You know, eat a nice balanced meal. Don't be trying to eat salads and shit right after surgery because you're gonna get skinny, you're gonna lose all the ass that, that you just went and had done. Do you have to have your clothes tailored now? Your shape has changed or go size up for booty? No, I don't have to have my clothes tailored. I was a large before I had surgery, now I'm a small. So honey, I got money, I'm just gonna go buy new clothes. And um, for my top up, I'm actually a medium. I could fit a small, but a medium is comfortable for me. My boobs got bigger since surgery. I don't know what, if it's the swelling didn't go down or what happened, but my titties got bigger. So I'm like a medium in the bottom, small, medium at the top, and large is cool too for the bottom, but large is too big. So medium bottom, small top, cause my waist is completely snatched. Like I have no stomach fat whatsoever. My stomach looks really good. Next question is how much was this was spent in total for everything? Me personally, I don't do like a lot of girls and tell you how much that I spent. That's another thing that I'm not gonna tell anybody. I'm not gonna tell you how much I spent. If you wanna have surgery, you need to go do your research. You need to make sure that your budget is good. You need to make sure that you have enough money. Um, of course, I know some girls that spend their last dime on getting surgery, but at the end of the day, that, do what you want to do because it is, an it is an investment. You will start making more money because people are going to start paying more attention to you because you look good. Would you get surgery again? Yes, I would. Did any girls at the home try to steal your stuff? No. How, was your, how, how has your pain been so far? I already answered that hope this isn't too personal what do you estimate was the total cost procedure meds etc i'm not going to be answering those questions it was priceless honey from one to ten how bad is the pain for the first day it was like a seven and now it's a zero i don't take pain pills now as you can see i'm drinking wine of course you have to wait to drink wine at least up to two to three weeks post-op because you're going to be taking a lot of pills. So you don't want to be drinking any type of alcohol with the pills, of course, and then, you know, just sometimes alcohol can bloat you up. Do you, did you have wish pics to show your doctor or what did you ask him to do to your body? No, I did not have any wish pics. I personally don't wish to look like anybody else but my damn self because I'm already beautiful. I just wanted to enhance my beauty. So all I told him was that I don't want natural. I want it to be very projecting. I want my hips to project and my ass to project. And you want to tell them that because if you tell them natural, when the swelling goes down, it's going to look natural. So you want to tell them you want it projected, bubble butt, big hips, because once the swelling goes down, it looks way better. Okay, so next question is, how is the bruising slash scar? What creams do you recommend buying? The bruising, of course, was bad. The first day, you're gonna be all purple underneath your boobs. It's gonna be hard to lift your arm. You're gonna have bruising around your butt and all of that. But all of the bruising, all of my bruising has pretty much gone away. I had a big old purple bruise under my boob. And of course, now it's completely gone. It's only like literally like a little line left. You can barely see it, but all my skin color is back to its normal color. Scarring is none. I don't have to worry about any scars. I have a little incision at the top of my back, another little incision at the bottom of my back. It's literally like a dot. Like if you put like a, this little dot, you could barely see it. You could just see the black stitch. I have a stitch right in between the crack of my butt. So you can't even see it. It's right in the crack and it's one little stitch. And then of course I have two, one incision here and one incision here. And of course them are very small as well. 
So after three months, once those heal up, I literally, you literally won't be able to see it. It's going to be so light. And so I don't have any scarring or have to worry about any scarring. So I don't recommend any cream because you won't need it. Depending on the doctor you go to. Can you do a video on your experience with C. Lily Recovery House? See, I don't understand why people ask that question. If I just made a whole video about it, why would I make another video about it? Like, what more drama do you need? Like, what else is there to say? Like, what do you want me to say? I don't get people. People don't know how to move on with their life. Did you have any weird reaction to the medication they have you on? All I had was the antibiotics that they provide for you. I brought all of my own vitamins and minerals. Of course, they bring you a list of everything that you will need, but you want to go through that list and only get the vitamins, will only get the antibiotics. Because if you watch my BBL list must have, and if you go to the end, I tell you all of the vitamins that you're going to need. So, and I'll, I'll go ahead and tell them to you now. You'll need the vitamins, you'll need a heal fast, botanica, arnica, you'll need your iron peels, you'll need bromelain, probiotics, and then you'll need stool softener, gas sex, and then you will also be taking melatonin. So that's all the pills that you're gonna be needing, and then vitamin C. Take you some emergency vitamin C packs, and then other than that, all you need is the antibiotics. That's all you need. As you can see, I'm in great health, honey. I feel amazing. I have great energy. I didn't even answer your question. I'm sorry. But no, I had no weird reactions. The only reaction I had was my pee smelled a little funny at first. But all of that slowly went away as time went by. Are you going to buy a new wardrobe for your new body? You look great and happy. Thank you so much. I am really good and I am very happy. And yes, of course, who wouldn't want to go shopping for the new body? But I kind of already went shopping last night and I'm going to do some more, of course, all throughout the rest of my life, honey. Is when can you stop wearing a faha and when can you sit without a BBL pillow? Three months. Are you going to work out and eat clean to maintain your diet? After my three month mark, I will. Right now I'm eating whatever the hell I want to, however I want to, but after my three month mark, of course I will start to diet, work out and all of that. What are your measurements before and after? I haven't measured myself yet, but I will here in my next video. Um, did you ever call your bank to get a refund? Yes, from the recovery house. Um, how did it feel waking up? Honestly, it was just like, you know, you're on anesthesia. You're like trying to wake up. Like you're kind of like just fucked up. Like it was, you know, it was weird. I was cold, but I'm, I'm a strong girl. So my body was trying to fight so hard to wake up. I woke up when they got me off the table. I remember um, when they were moving me from the surgery table onto the bed, I, I, I remember waking up because I was like, Ugh, because they picked me up and moved me. So it was so, my body was so sore, but I didn't feel anything. And I think when I made that noise, like whenever they were moving me, I was like, Ugh, or whatever I did, they were like, oh shit, she's waking up. So they immediately gave me some more anesthesia and I don't remember anything after that. But that's normal for some people to wake up when they're moving you. Um, but other than that, it was just, you know, it was kind of tough. Like I was just fighting to wake up. It took me about two whole hours before I finally woke up from the anesthesia. Of course, I recorded the entire process for y'all for my surgery day video. But after that, I was good. Like the doctor came in and told me, he was like, you're a very strong girl. You're a very healthy woman. You take really good care of your body. And when he told me that, I was like, I know that's right, honey, because I do. And I knew my body was gonna try to wake up. Like, cause I'm strong, I be trying to fight when I'm asleep. So just have, being under, I know my body was just fighting to fucking wake up. So um, yeah, I'm a strong girl, honey. The question is, how do you feel mentally, physically as of now? I feel amazing. Like I got so much love. The men in my life are amazing. I cut off a lot of people in my life that were upsetting me or not, you know, on my speed, on my vibe, you know, I cut those people out of my life 
And ever since I cut those people out of my life that don't reach, that don't meet my expectations, my life has been so much better. Now I literally only deal with people who meet my expectations. I only hang out with bitches that got money. You know, I'm not hanging, I'm not hanging out with bum ass bitches anymore. I don't give a fuck how good of a person you are. If you're not on my level, if we go out and you only using my money, only drinking my drink, only smoking my weed, only in my car, not giving me no gas money, don't have shit to offer, but being cute, I'm not fucking with you. You feel me? So now I fuck with bitches that got their own, they got their car, they can meet up with me, they could buy me a fucking drink. You feel me? You know, bitches that got their own clothes and their own hair, you know, just... And by hair, I mean like bitches. I used to literally fuck with bitches that ain't have their hair done. They'd be like, can I wear one of your wigs? You feel me? So, like, and then men. I, I've i always only fuck with men who are substantial. But now, it's like, if you're substantial and you're not giving me what I need or what I want, I'm not going to fuck with you. Because you're going to get what you want from me. So, if you're not giving me everything I want, I'm not fucking with you. Because I'm an amazing woman. I should get what I want. I deserve it. I'm a, I'm a good woman. I'm an honest woman. I'm a hardworking woman. I'm a clean woman. I take care of myself. I'm smart. I'm spicy. I got good pussy. I got good head. I could cook. I could clean. I take care of my dogs. I handle my business. I'm good in bed. I take care of you. I listen to you. I give you good advice. I push you to be better in life. I'm God fearing. I want you to love God. You feel me? But I don't push. I don't force that on you. Like so, if I cannot get the world. If I can't, not the world, but if I can't get from you what I really need as a woman, then you're not getting shit from me. Not getting my time, you're not getting my fucking air, you're not breathing my fucking air. So now that I have finally like put my foot down, life is good, honey. And physically, baby, this pussy tight, this ass feel good, my teeth feel good. Like, honey, I cannot wait to physically get physical. Do you hear me? <laughs> I hope y'all like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Don't forget to go follow me on Instagram. I'm Elijah Thore. And then also, if you're in the Dallas, Texas area, don't forget to book with me at Puneri Boss Lounge. If you want a massage, if you want a lymphatic massage, lashes, your hair done, honey. I do that, of course. You already know, hair assassinator. And massage is just, that's my thing, baby. Oh, okay. So yes, don't forget, hit me up. And then also don't forget, scared feet don't eat and a closed mouth will never, ever, ever get fed. Bye. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's your girl Malijah. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be one of the first to be notified when I drop a new vlog. Don't forget, scared feet don't eat and a closed mouth won't get fed.